wife, Kuzje Van Bergen, were asked to create a large-scale project that would integrate into the setting of the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. They traveled to Kansas City in 1991 and prepared to transform the vast imposing lawn that stretches before the massive neoclassical facade of the museum. While visiting the gallery soon after their arrival, Oldenburg's wife was attracted to the headdresses worn by the Native Americans and a painting by Frederick Remington, which led to their initial concept of large feathers scattered over the lawn as if dropped from the wing of a huge passing bird. As they proceeded to research the site, they came across an aerial photograph of the museum grounds that reminded them of the layout of the tennis court. The two imagined the museum building with balls distributed over the grounds, but soon determined that the ball shape would have been repetitive. Kushchev suggested that feathers be combined with the ball form to become a shuttlecock, a lyrical object used in badminton, with the ability to float, spin, fly, and land in many different ways. The couple proposed three 17-foot high shuttlecock sculptures for the lawn, each in a different position. Although their placement appeared to be random, the shuttlecocks were actually located at strategic points that would bring the far reaches of the site together. A fourth shuttlecock in an inverted position, reminiscent of a teepee, landed on the other side of the museum. The shuttlecocks were installed June 22nd through July 1st, 1994, and were inaugurated July. The is a study of art by analyzing and comparing form and style or the way a piece of artwork is made in its purely visual concepts. As I described earlier, the composition or arrangement of the shuttlecocks appears to be random, but they are actually placed so that it would bring the widespread land of the museum together. The plane of the shuttlecocks is both diagonal and horizontal. Some of the shuttlecocks are pointing vertically and some are tilted. The shuttlecocks have asymmetrical balance. Now let's look at the more well-known characteristics of formalism. Each shuttlecock is made up of lines. A curved line creates the base. Diagonal lines make the feathers. It looks like the feathers are given texture by cross-hatching. The shuttlecocks are three-dimensional. They are made up of a regular three-dimensional geometric and irregular shapes. The base is half of a capsule or oval shape, and the quill and shaft of the feathers are created by long, skinny cylinder shapes. The actual feather is created by an oval shape with two semi-pointed ends. Color has three physical properties, hue, value, and intensity. The base is orange, which is a secondary color. The feathers of the shuttlecocks are white. Because of the two color schemes, analogous hues are formed. In terms of value, this piece of art is chromatic and achromatic due to the two different colors. White is achromatic and orange is known as a light chromatic. The shuttlecocks have a high intensity due to the white being the most bright or light intense, and orange not falling far back from it on the color value scale. Overall, the formalism in this piece of art is quite clear and is easy to spot. One of the most common methodologies of art is semiology. Semiology is the sign of, is the science of science, and it takes issue with the biographical method and with much of formalism. In the structural linguistics of the Swiss scholar Ferdinand de Saussure, a sign is composed of signifier and signified. The former is the sound or written element, and the latter is the concept of what the sign refers to. According to Saussure, linguistic equivalence is not part of the theory he proposed. Certain semioticians, however, see some relation between signifier and signified. I'm not a semiotician but by any means, but I believe that when Oldenburg created shuttlecocks, there was a sense of linguistic equivalence between the written element and what the signs referred to. The written element is shuttlecocks, and that is what the art work refers directly to. I believe that shuttlecocks belongs to the category of pop art. Pop art is a modern art movement that reached its peak in New York City in the 1950s. It uses imagery styles and themes of advertising, mass media, and popular culture. Specifically, Oldenburg specialized in pop art culture. Oldenburg can be considered pop art this in the sense that his subject matter is derived from everyday objects in the media. His work is distinctive in maintaining a sense of textual reality of their materials. Oldenburg shows textual reality in shuttlecocks by making the feathers look realistic even though they are made out of concrete. Oldenburg's pop art also has a relationship to realism. Realism depicts figures and objects to resemble their actual appearances rather than a distorted or abstract way. Realism can be found in shuttlecocks just by looking at how closely the artwork represents a real shuttlecock in the game of badminton. Another great example of realism is Rene Marguerite's The Betrayal of Images. This artwork is a painting of a pipe with the words, this is not a pipe in French. There are many influences that had an effect on the final products of shuttlecocks. Whenever Oldenburg attended the School of Art Institute in New York City, abstract expressionism was used to categorize the New York School painters. It was an artistic movement of the mid 20th century, compromising diverse styles and techniques while emphasizing, especially on artists, liberty to convey attitudes and emotions through non traditional means. As I stated earlier, Oldenburg took greater interest in the city's character, but the ways in which he was taught always influenced his works of art. 19th century American Western art also had a major influence on this piece, especially Native American. Oldenburg's wife, Kuzje, was fascinated by the Indian and headdress painting by Frederick Remington. This initially gave Oldenburg the idea to use feathers, which are now an integral part of shuttlecocks. Overall, I chose this piece because I've grown up going to Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. I have always wondered what the sculptures were and why they were there. I wanted to learn more about the history of shuttlecocks since it is such an iconic landmark. I think this artwork is very unique and honestly never thought of it as a piece of art before I started this paper. It's amazing what you will learn when you step out of your comfort zone and explore.